go get your unique identifier number because I've come to the conclusion for most of my clients, including grandma, maybe, that the only way to handle the situation is to go ahead and get licensed. If you're able-bodied and you've got half a mind and you can afford the education, you, the education can be available online, which is nice, uh, because it can be a lot cheaper that way. But you're going to track, so this is the place to start. Start here and get your unique identifier number and get out there and take the education. So by the way, somebody in the education business is going to be making a lot of money. You know, Champion, you know, most of us get, who are real estate brokers, get solicited regularly by Champion, and they're the champions. I mean, they are the... They, they do more education than anybody else. I'm going to start teaching for a while again. <laughs> um, you go under popular links on this site under getting started and then it tracks you right through it exactly what you have to do to apply and get it. You get an account set up and then you get the, your ID. There's other relevant information on the site as well. Then for information on how to get licensed in Texas, there's a specific link if you go to the website. If you get the PowerPoint, uh, you know, you can click on the on the website and drop it into your into your browser. Um, somebody else, I know a good joke when I steal one, and the emails that have been going around put forth some ideas that I thought were interesting arguments that perhaps ought to be considered. And how many of you have seen these? It actually went out with uh, the emails that promoted this meeting, so most of you could have seen it. But factors perhaps that HUD ought to consider is there are lots of bank loans that aren't available. There are lots of properties that you just simply can't get a conventional bank loan for, for whatever reason. It may be, um, well, m most of you know what I'm talking about. You just can't get a loan. And if seller financing is going to require licensure, what's going to happen to those properties? But those properties are going to be discounted in value before somebody's going to come along and pay cash. And if you can't sell or finance, and people have to pay cash, there's no source of financing without getting licensed. There are going to be a lot fewer potential buyers out there. And guess what happens when you've got fewer potential buyers in a marketplace? Values decline. So who thinks that this will contribute to the recovery of the, of the current marketplace? I, I've been here before when they changed. Dave was talking earlier about the increase in cash uh, required by buyers to get FHA loans. If you were around any time in the last 40 years and you experienced what's happened in Texas previously, when lenders increase their, the equity required by their borrowers, guess what? Fewer buyers can qualify. And when fewer borrowers can qualify, it's harder to sell your property. It just makes sense. It's called Economics 101. And then you've got essentially a demand that is going up relative, excuse me, a, a, a supply that's going up relative to the demand. And I learned that means that's going to put downward pressure on prices. When you can't sell your home, guess what? Increase in foreclosures. When you can't um, get a loan, uh, guess what happens to the housing industry? Guess what happens to unemployment? I mean, has anybody really thought this through? Maybe they think it's just going to be a temporary dislocation, and maybe that's true. I just don't like the idea of going through the temporary dislocation while I'm alive. The tight lending climate has made bank financing out of reach for many. So again, if we can't sell or finance, even carry a second, there's no, there's no exemption for carrying a second lien in order to help finance your property. Under the statute. Seller financing is something we've been relying on from the beginning of time as part of our property rights. And they're effectively saying, well, you can still do it, you just gotta go out and get licensed. Again, I'm concerned about grandma. And by the way, it's not just grandma. Anybody had a foreclosure in the last, I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but if, you, if you're having difficulty in paying your bills, that might be particularly when you need to sell a property and get somebody in there who will pay you on the rack. Or maybe it's, it's a particularly important for you to generate some income from a property that's sitting vacant and the only way to attract a buyer is to offer some seller financing. That's part of grandma's problem. She may not like renting the property and she needs to create some source of income. Every time we create that kind of pressure in the marketplace, it has a ripple effect through all of our uh, employment rates, etc. And 
this this person agrees the rules would prohibit I don't, I don't know who put this out but uh, we went online to see some of the comments you can go online and read the comments of people who are writing into HUD unfortunately you can only see one page at a time so your control F search feature has limited ability and as you can imagine there are lots of organizations like public 